Right, in this set of rearranging equations, we're going to look at how to deal with fractions. So our first fraction here, we're going to try and make b a subject. Now when we're dealing with fractions, the key thing is to try and get rid of fractions because uh, generally they make um, equations more difficult. So we've got b minus 2 on the bottom, and the way to get rid of that, we're obviously dividing by b minus 2, so the best thing to do to get rid of that is to do times by b minus 2. So let's multiply both sides by b minus 2. On the left hand side, that would leave us d plus c. And if we times the right hand side by b minus 2, we get 5 times b minus 2. So remember, you're undoing the divide by b minus 2, so therefore times by it just leaves you with the d plus c. Now let's multiply out the brackets, because we essentially want b on its own. We don't want the b with the 2, we want the b on its own. So 5 times b gives you 5b. 5 times minus 2 gives you minus 10. And remember our rule for using bod mass. Normally you times by 5 then minus 10. So to undo that, we undo the minus 10 first. So we're going to add 10 to both sides. And we're just left with 5b on the right hand side. And to get b on its own, therefore, if we're times it by 5, we undo that by dividing by 5. So you get d plus c plus 10, all divided by 5, and that gives you b. This one's a little bit tri well, it's quite a bit trickier. We're going to make v the subject of this one. And there are several ways to do it, two way a couple of ways to do it, and we're going to try, I'm going to show you two of them. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually get everything onto one side that's not V, leave the 1 over V on this side, get the 1 over V on this side, and try and make it into a single fraction using what I know about adding fractions. So, first thing I would do is that I will add, sorry, subtract, because I'm adding 1 over v, U to 1 over V, so I'm going to subtract 1 over U from both sides. So, I just leave 1 over V here, and I get minus 1 over U here. Now, what you can do is, because this is a reciprocal, you can just, reciprocating is to turn a set fraction upside down. If you were to turn v, um, 1 over v upside down, you get back to v over 1, which is just v. So it would be nice if we could turn this upside down, but we can't do that unless it's a single fraction. So we need to add these two fractions together, and to do that, you need a common denominator, i.e. the same thing on the bottom. And the way to do that is if you times top and bottom of this by u, you get fu on the bottom. Times top and bottom of this by f, you get fu on the bottom. And by doing that, you haven't changed the fractions, because you're times top and bottom by the same thing. You essentially, they would cance can cancel out. So 1 over f times by u on the top times by u on the bottom leaves you u over f u. Times top and bottom of this by f, you're left with 1 times f is f. f times u gives you f u on the bottom. So left with 1 over v equals, now we can subtract these because we've got the same denominator. So we've got u minus f over f u. And to finish that up, we can just reciprocate, turn this upside down. So 1 over v turned upside down is just v over 1, which is just v. And on this side, turn this upside down, you left f over u on that top, and u minus f on the bottom. Let's look at the other way we could have done So the first thing I'm going to do in this way is I'm going to actually get rid of all the fractions. So I'm going to have to times by v, times by u, and times by f. So first of all, I'm going to times by v. So that just leaves me with, if you times this by v, you're just left with 1. Times this by v, you get v over u. Makes it v times as big. Times this by v, you also get v over f. If you've got a plus in between your things and you times the left side by v, that means you have to times each term by v. Imagine having brackets around here and then timesing that all out by v, cancel here and end up with v over u there. It's a good way to imagine it. Now I'm going to times throughout by u. So 1 times by u gives me u. If I times this by u, that will just cancel with the bottom. And I've got to times this by u, so that gives me u on the top. Now I'm going to times both sides by f. So times this by f, I get fu. Times this by f, I get fv. And times this by f, I'm just left with uv. Now I need to get all the v's together. 
So this term has a V in it, and this term has a V in it. So therefore, to get them on the same side, I need to subtract FV. So to subtract FV from this side, I'm just left with the FU. VU minus FV on this side, because I'm going to subtract the FV from this side. Now, you've got two Vs. How do you get them on their own? Well, this is a factor of this, and this is a factor of this. So therefore, the trick here is to factorise by V. So take V out, you're left with U here. Take V out of here, you're left with F. And you can always check by multiplying that out again that you factorised it properly. Now we've got V times U minus F, so we can just divide both sides by U minus F. And we get FU, let's move that up, give myself more space, divide by U minus F equals V. And you can see that I have exactly the same answer. Right, in this last part, this last question, we're going to make good use of factorization again. And we're going to make D the subject of this one. And once again, the first thing we want to do is get rid of the fraction. So we times both sides by 6. So that leaves us D, X minus 3. Times this by 6, that just cancels out with that 6. And we're going to times everything here by 6. So 6 times D and 6 times F. Imagine you've got brackets here and you're multiplying it out. Now we want to multiply out, we've got all the D's here. And we want to multiply these out so we can subtract the D's and get all the D's on the same side. So you've got DX times by 3D. You've got D times minus 3 gives you minus 3D. And that equals 6D minus 6F. Take the 6D away from this side so all the D's on the same side. So you get DX minus 9D. 3D minus 60 is minus 9D. And we're left with minus 6F. This negative doesn't disappear. A lot of people lose it when they take a term in front of a, a cross. Don't do that. Now, we got D here, D here. And the only way to get D on its own is to factorise. So we take out a factor of D. So D into DX leaves you just X. Take out a factor of D just leaves you minus 9. And we want to get D on its own, so you've got D times X minus 9. Let's just divide both sides by X minus 9. And doing that on this side means you're just left with D. On this side, you get X minus 9 on the bottom. Now, we like to get rid of negatives when we can, so let's just change all the signs top and bottom. And we get 6F, and you get a minus X plus 9. Now, if you rearrange the order of those, okay, so you put the 9 here and minus X there, then you don't have any negatives at the front and it just looks a bit neater. And there you go.